Well, in our last video, we understand that why and how Azure regions and geographics are important for us when we are trying to deploy our infrastructure. We also understood that where and how we can choose regions to get best performance. And if we have a concern on the compliance, how company can follow the geographic standards and they choose the right place to deploy their data or store their data in Azure platform. Now, in this particular picture, if you remember, uh, I have mentioned that we will talk about Azure availability zones in the next video. Why it is so important and why I would like to talk in separate video. It is a very important point here, which we are going to cover today, at least to make you understand that how availability zone can help you to build your application or web server infrastructure within Azure and with all the safe or SLA's 99.9% .9 uptime, how you can leverage those resources we will talk about this in this particular video. But for right now, uh, let me just try to tell you that where are our availability zones available at the moment. As you can see in this picture, if you go to availability, availability zone, it has some blue circle and rectangular shape inside a dot. So it, they are very limited at the moment. You don't find every place you have all the availability zones. And now let's try to talk that how it can help you to build your infrastructure to like, you know, use the business continuity, disaster recovery, and meet the SLAs in case you're running the infrastructure for your clients. So guys, let's move forward. So let's talk about availability zones. Hello guys, my name is Harsh Angra, and in this video, we are going to cover two very important points. The first one is what are availability zones? And second one, obviously, why we need them or do we really need availability zones? Well, if you ask me, it completely depends on the infrastructure you have built or deployed within Azure platform. It is up to your need that how you actually would, uh, would like to uh, you know, use uh, the Microsoft Azure services, whether it, uh, it makes you uh, in concern if your data center is down or it doesn't matter because your server may be up and running after some time and you are absolutely fine with that. So as I said, it completely uh, on the choice, but yeah, definitely availability zone is one of the very key feature from Azure platform that you can choose and start deploying your infrastructure. So guys, uh, in this video, I'm not going to cover any practical for availability zone, but certainly I will show you from where you can choose and we can start uh, deploying our infrastructure so that you can, you know, have a overall idea that where are the options available when we are trying to deploy a virtual machine. So where you can choose availability zones. You will have that kind of experience in this video, but upcoming video will have a complete uh, deployment of a web server. Let's take that as an example. And I will deploy that uh, you know web server and choose availability zone and try to show you how you can leverage all the resources or what kind of concept you need to keep in your mind while deploying your web servers or application servers using availability zones. So guys, first talk about what are availability zones? So uh, yeah, to make you understand, let me try to give you a uh, one line uh, answer of this question. So basically the region is set of data center or set of servers collectively connected within a single physical location. It has a power source, it has a cooling system, everything in one data center. So, but again, it's a region, right? But if you talk about the availability zone, you can consider that you have created one region with one physical location, but just, uh, you know, uh, just uh, far away from that location, but within the same region, you put or create another data center, but uh, connect that data center to this primary uh, region data center with a very, very high speed network connection so that whatever data you are copying in one location, it will be within a couple of millisecond or very fraction of seconds, the data will be copied to the other data centers as well. Why you need to 
think in that way because let's take an example that one of the data center or one of the data center place have some kind of network outage or electricity outage or maybe any disaster happened to that particular area or region for example so uh, Microsoft has created physically separated these data center within that region so that if one of the data center goes down you will have another data center and your servers are up and running with 99.9% .9 SLS uptime which is a great great functionality if you are running your business 24 by 7. I hope uh, this makes you a little bit sense, but don't worry, I will explain you when trying to give you some practical idea that how you can choose availability zone and how it actually help you to deploy your infrastructure. With that, do we really need availability zones? Just like I said, it completely depends on your choice. Yes, uh, it is really important factor because if we are running a web server or the application server, which is consider, uh, considered to be consumed all the time, 24 by 7, then yes, availability zone will definitely help you to run your business all the time and you won't even find any downtime or any kind of, you know, outage if anything goes wrong within the data center. I hope you get some idea, but let's try to catch up a little bit more in the practical that where you can choose this option and how you can even make you understand uh, more while choosing availability zones for your resources. So guys, finally we are on Azure portal and let me show you where you can have this option of availability zone when you're trying to deploy your virtual machine. Let's start with that first. So to understand that and to find out, simply go to uh, virtual machine, just click on add. And once you click on add, it will start uh, showing all the options. And as soon as you give the name, for example, uh, Harsh Arena Web Server, I just give the name of a web server, for example. And here you can see the option called availability options, right? So, but right now I choose the region Australia East. And if I take you to the picture in Australia East, this is not the availability zone, right? I mean, you cannot deploy your availability zone in this region. So if I go back and try to show you the option, you find that availability zone is grayed out, right? Now, where are actually availability zones available? So you can find it in the nearby location. It is Southeast Asia for me. So let's go back and try to choose the right region for us. That is Southeast Asia. As soon as I choose, now we need to click on this option. And as you can see, you can find availability zone option here. Now, this is not only the thing. When you click on this, you can find availability zones. So as you can see, there are one physical location, two physical location, and third physical location. So for example, if you are trying to choose the first, which means I'm going to deploy my web server in the physical location one in the region of Southeast Asia. And in case I need the business continuity, I need the data should be synchronously very much fast up to date to my secondary location. So I can choose while deploying another server, for example, server two, and I can choose here availability zone two. Similarly, three and three. So what you're doing here is you are choosing different physical location in the same region while you're trying to deploy your infrastructure. And that's how you can use the business continuity. That's how you don't need to worry about any disaster happen to one physical location. You're still another uh, you know server up and running in the same region but in different physical location i hope you get my point and understand the concept of availability zone in general i'm pretty sure you already got the concept of availability zone now 
Right. So let's try to uh, move forward and try to gather the same information what exactly we have discussed. But to make you understand in an easy way, I forgot to mention about this picture because this is going to be very much helpful for you to understand even in an easier way. So as you can see here, I have actually created two separate different uh, physical location basically because in this location, I have a separate data center, which means storage. I have a separate cooling system. I have separate connections, network connection, and the power source as well. Similarly, in other location as well, I have the same deployment too. And I have connected these uh, location, I mean these two location via very high capacity network connectivity. So what does it mean? Like as soon as these are connected, so if you have a server and you would like to copy and you would like to synchronize with other server, these both can communicate in, at a very, very fast pace and you won't even find any delays on the communication because they are very connected and within the same region, that's another added advantage. But again, these are two different physical location and considered to be a part of a single region, actually. So I think you get overall the concept of uh, this one now better. So let's move forward and try to uh, understand that what exactly availability zone we just discussed. And uh, I also create another picture for you to make you understand at least on the concept part. So let me try to explain here as well. And another one is uh, why AZs, which, which, which I think you already know now, why you need to choose availability zone. It's all about business continuity. Let's try to talk about first that. And of course, consider to be a part of disaster recovery strategy, because we, what we are concerned here is in case my primary data center is down or my first physical location is down, this has to be worried to me because uh, to make sure the server or the data center up and running, Microsoft people will definitely take some time. And during that time, your server is completely down, which may be a concern for you. So to make sure it is all the time up and running, we can also create a kind of replication in these uh, in between these zones, which means that if you have a server running at primary location, you can synchronize data to the another physical site or the secondary location and you have your data up and running all the time. You don't need to worry. That's why we consider this availability zone as a part of disaster recovery strategy as well. Now, as I mentioned that SLA is 99.9, .9, which is really, really great in terms of uh, your server is uh, always running and you don't need to worry about its downtime. So I think you get uh, better understanding on that regard too. So another one, uh, let's talk about that availability zone, although I have explained, but just to repeat one more time that uh, these are actually a unique physical location with independent power network and cooling system. Uh, along with that, there's a storage, there are many things mentioned. So definitely it's a, one of the very important thing you need to understand. The another one is all about the zonal services. The zonal services are, uh, I'm not going to explain so much in deep at the moment because when we do the practical uh, in upcoming video, I will even explain you the practical part and then it, uh, it makes you sense and uh, make you understand even in a better way. So for now, just to uh, understand that zonal services is all about, let's say you have an IP address, you have configured that IP address, you have uh, virtual machines in that particular data center location or the physical location, that's all about the zonal services. But when we talk about the zone redundant services, which means we have a virtual machine, we have SQL databases, and now we are trying to synchronously or sync from here to here, which considered to be a part of zone redundant services, because in case if this physical location is down, you don't need to worry, this physical location is up and running. So that's the concept of overall zone redundant services and zonal service means within this zone, virtual machine is running, subnet or applic I mean, uh, subnet IP addresses are running, SQL databases are there. So sort of that is a part of a one particular zone or zonal services. As I mentioned, when I do the practical, it will make you more even uh, better understanding on that. However, let's uh, come back to this picture to make you understand and then I will wrap up for this video. So basically this is a load balancer because this is a perfect example of availability zone. So what you have done here is in availability zone one, two and three, you have actually created multiple front end servers 
or front-end application servers. And these all applications are actually connected within the same zonal services, which is uh, like exactly the SQL database. And you can find all of there right here. Now, the point here is you can create, because these all are in the same uh, kind of a region. So the, the, the connection, the, you know, the update time in between the data transfer is extremely great performed during, uh, you know, in between this uh, uh, different kind of physical location. So if you would like to sync, it would be better that you can sync your data synchronously from one DB to another. And you can also take a kind of a, using a replication as a disaster recovery to my third location, which means if anything goes wrong here, you can have your up and running server with like, you know, in a physical location too. And in a very, very bad situation, if these two zones or physical site is down, don't worry, we still already have up and running my third location or physical site within availability zone where SQL database is already synchronized and front end servers are up and running. So till Microsoft is fixing the problem here, definitely all the customers can directly communicate to this particular physical site and they won't be actually, you know, uh, uh, you know, aware that this is going to the third location because we are using a clustered IP address in here and that's how load balances comes into the picture. Although this is not a networking session, but just to give you the uh, help, the network load balancer can help you to receive the request and transfer to the desired location wherever we want. So that could be easily achievable. So that's a separate, uh, you know, kind of concept. So we will not talk about much in AZ 300, but yes, in AZ 103, I will talk about this uh, load balancer much. So guys, uh, that to be all, and I'm pretty sure you understand about the availability zone in a overall conceptual way and i hope you find this uh, video informative you learn a little bit more that how you can start setting up your availability zone and the concept is also clear that how you can choose the right region to deploy your availability zones for your services so guys uh, for now let's wrap up this video and i hope you like this video please share if you like and please help to uh, subscribe if you have not done yet and uh, more content as, uh, are coming and if you have any suggestion to uh, improve uh, the overall quality of the video please share your comments so that i can review them and try to improve the overall uh, you know learning experience for you so for now please take care guys and it's a covid 19 situation everywhere please take care of your family take care of your health i'll see you in the next video till then take care bye bye peace